Chevrolet quality brake surface. Both Bendix and Delco Moraine main cylinders are used on Chevrolet products. They are coated and can be identified by the letters stamped into the body near the closed end. The code indicates the displacement potential of that particular cylinder, which must always be replaced with an identical unit. To remove, disconnect the main cylinder push rod at the brake pedal by removing the spring clip and withdrawing the clevis pin. Place shop towels under the main cylinder to absorb spillage and disconnect the brake outlet lines. Plug off or cover the lines. Remove the two retaining nuts and remove the main cylinder complete with push rod. To overhaul, clamp the master cylinder in a vise. Remove the snap ring retainer and secondary piston stop bolt, either from the bottom of the unit, if Bendix, or from the interior of the front reservoir, if Delco Moraine. Next, apply very low pressure air to the fluid inlet hole in the forward reservoir to force out the secondary piston, piston spring retainer, and spring. If the spring and retainer do not come out, they can be fished out with a bent wire. Turn the cylinder in the vise so that the outlet holes are up. Drill a 13 64 inch hole through each check valve seat. Next, Tap the drilled holes with a quarter twenty tap. Install a spare flare connector nut in the outlet hole. Now, place a quarter inch flat washer on a quarter twenty bolt about three quarters of an inch long. Screw the bolt into the tapped hole until it is snug. Back out the flare connector to remove the valve seat tube. Carefully clean and inspect the bore. Slight imperfections and discoloration should be polished out with crocus cloth. Do not hone. The length of the secondary piston determines the displacement of a cylinder. Accordingly, secondary pistons are coated. The rings or grooves in the center indicate the capacity. Again, replacement must be identical. Strip off all rubber parts and seals. Remove the piston extension screw, securing the primary piston spring to the primary piston, the spring retainer, and primary seal protector. Thoroughly clean the body and parts in D-Clean, or its equivalent, and blow out all ports and passages. To reassemble, place the master cylinder body in a vise with the outlet holes up. Place new rubber check valves over the springs and carefully seat the assembly in the holes. Then... Place new brass tube seats into position in the outlet holes. Be careful not to cock them. Screw flare connector nuts into the outlet holes and tighten until the tube seat bottoms. Remove the flare connector nuts and check for burrs. Install new secondary seals in the two grooves in the end of the secondary piston with the seal lips facing away from each other. Now... Install a new primary seal protector and primary seal on the primary piston with the flat side of the seal against the seal protector and the seal protector against the end containing the compensating holes. Then, assemble the secondary piston spring and retainer. Push the spring retainer over the end of the secondary piston until it seats inside the seal lip. Liberally coat the seals and master cylinder with clean brake fluid. Install a new secondary seal on the push rod end of the primary piston with the seal lips toward the small compensating holes. Install the spring retainer inside the primary seal lips. Install the secondary piston stop in the end of the primary piston spring and place the open end against the spring retainer. Insert the piston extension screw through the secondary piston stop and screw it into the primary piston until it bottoms. Hold the open end of the master cylinder bore down and insert the secondary piston assembly and spring. Push the secondary piston into the bore until the spring seats against the closed end. Turn the open end up and clamp it in a vise. Install the primary piston assembly into the bore and push it down until the piston is below the snap ring groove. Install the snap ring. Push down on the primary piston until there is clearance for the secondary piston stop bolt. Install the bolt. 
Install the reservoir diaphragm and cover, snapping the wire bale into position to secure. Install a new boot over the push rod and slide a new mounting gasket into position over the studs. Place the master cylinder over the mounting studs and tighten the nuts. Attach the push rod clevis to the brake pedal. Connect the brake lines to the master cylinder outlets. If the normal position in the car is tilted, fill the reservoirs to one quarter inch of the top at the rear wall. If the cylinder sits level, fluid should be one quarter inch from the top. Chevrolet brake drums are demountable and can be removed without removing the hub. In cases of abnormal wear, the lanced area must be knocked out and the brake shoes retracted. A hooked wire is necessary to disengage the self-adjuster while the brake adjustment star wheel is turned. Brake drums should be carefully inspected for taper, out of roundness, scores, and cracks. A drum out of round more than eight thousands should be trued on a brake lathe, as should a tapered or bell drum. Check in several places with an inside micrometer. Minor imperfections such as light scores can usually be cleaned up with emery cloth. Deeper scores call for refinishing the drum to ensure a smooth, efficient braking service. When refinishing brake drums, set up the drum lathe to take out a minimum of metal if the intention is to use standard linings and all that is needed is a true braking surface. If more than 20 thousandths must be removed to true up the drum, it should be rebored to 60 thousandths oversize and 30 thousandths oversize lining installed. Drum runout should not exceed five thousandths of an inch. The braking surface on new drums from stock must be cleaned with a volatile, non-toxic, greaseless solvent before installation. New drums are protected with a coating of anti-corrosion oil. Do not use gasoline or kerosene, since they both can leave an oily film. To continue, unhook the brake shoe pullback springs from the anchor pin and link end by rotating tool J8049. Next, remove the actuator return spring and link, as well as the shoe hold down pins and springs. Remove the actuator assembly, but do not disassemble unless there are broken parts. Remove the adjusting screw spring and adjusting screw. Don't mix up the adjusting screws. Those marked L are used on the left side of the vehicle, those marked R on the right. On a rear wheel, unhook the parking brake cable and remove the parking brake strut and spring. Remove the parking brake lever from the secondary brake shoe by forcing off the C-clip retaining the pivot pin. Carefully pull the lower edge of the boot out of its groove and check the interior for signs of excess fluid. A small amount is almost always present and acts as a lubricant for the piston, but large quantities indicate the cylinder needs overhaul. To overhaul, the cylinder must be removed from the vehicle. Disconnect the brake hose from the steel line and unscrew the hose from the cylinder if on a front wheel. Disconnect the line on a rear. On a front wheel, remove the anchor pin retaining the cylinder to the brake backing plate. On a rear, the cap screws. Disassemble the cylinder and discard all but the push rods and expander spring. Examine the bore for scratches, pits, roughness, or corrosion. A corroded cylinder must be replaced. Stains can be polished out with crocus cloth. Use circular movements, not a back and forth horizontal motion. Clean all parts and declean or its equivalent and blow dry. To reassemble, lubricate the bore and counter bore with clean brake fluid. Insert the expander spring assembly and new brake cups with their flat sides out. Do not lubricate the caps before assembly. Install new unlubricated Durex pistons into the bore with the flat end facing the center. Install new boots, also unlubricated. Clean the brake shoe contact surfaces on the brake backing plate with emery cloth and smear them lightly with lubriplate. Check the tightness on the backing plate attaching bolts. Next, secure the cylinder to the brake flange plate with a threaded anchor pin or cap screws. Tighten the pin to 130 foot-pounds. Peen over the flat washer to lock. Install the brake line or hose. Always install the recommended shoes and linings for the vehicle being serviced. 
or rapid wear, outright failure, or fade can occur. Remove all burrs or excess bonding material on the edge of the shoe which bears on the brake backing plate. Also, when working on rear brakes, lightly lubricate the parking brake lever and bolt before assembling to the secondary shoe. Check for free movement when complete. Additionally, lubricate the parking brake cable. Carefully compare the old spring with a new similar spring. Discard any which displays signs of rust, cracking, or stretching. Clean and lubricate the adjusting screw. It must work easily and freely for the automatic adjuster to do a proper job. Connect the brake shoes together with the adjuster screw spring. Place the adjuster nut, screw, and socket in position. The star wheel should always be nearest the secondary shoe, out of the way of the adjuster screw spring. Connect the parking brake cable to the lever. The primary shoe with the short lining always faces forward. Engage the ends of the shoes in the push rod slots and retain the primary shoe with a hold down pin, spring, and dish washer. To install the secondary shoe, position the parking brake strut and spring between the shoes. Assemble the actuator assembly and return spring to the secondary shoe and retain with the hold down pin, spring, and dish washer. Install the guide plate over the brake anchor pin. Hook the actuator link on the actuator lever and while holding down on the lever, pull the eye of the link over the anchor pin. Install the primary shoe return spring, first by hooking it into the brake shoe, and then over the anchor pin with tool J8049. Install the secondary shoe return spring by hooking it into the shoe, and then over the hooked end of the actuator link. When complete, test actuator operation. It should function easily in order for the automatic adjustment to take place. A good indication of correct assembly is when the bottom edge of the actuating lever is about one quarter inch above the center line of the adjusting screw. The front brakes are assembled in an identical manner except for the parking brake strut, spring, parking brake lever, and cable. When all wheels have been assembled except for drums, measure each drum internal diameter with gauge J21177. Use the opposite side of the tool to check the lining to drum clearance. Adjust the star wheel until the gauge just slips over the lining OD in several positions. Next, reinstall the brake drums with the drum locating hole in line with the hole in the wheel hub. If the lanced area has been knocked out, insert a rubber plug in the opening. Bleed the system, install the wheels, and lower the vehicle. Make several forward and reverse stops until the pedal height is satisfactory. Road test for a final quality check. The last step in Chevrolet quality brake service.